Hey everybody, so we were talking about uh, cones yesterday, and um, sorry about that. Uh, and this is where we left it. Um, that cones come in three colors. They're the primary colors of light. What does that mean? A reminder that the primary colors of light are very different than the primary colors of paint. The primary colors of light are red, green, and blue. And before you uh, freak out on me about that, if you've been in the theater and look at the lighting, they have red lights, green lights, and blue lights. And so what happens is you have uh, three different cones. They are sensitive to that wavelength of light. So blue cones are sensitive to blue wavelengths, red cones to the shorter red wavelengths, and green cones to the middle green wavelengths. Now when it says here that lack of one or more of these is color blindness, what we mean by that is for some reason, those cones are not sensitive to those colors of light. Probably they're lacking a protein that uh, is produced by your DNA. And then, or your DNA produces protein, or is in charge of producing proteins, and you're probably missing. Now, because of this point right here, we'll come back to the color in a minute. Because of this point right here, that each cone has its own integrated neuron in the brain, that makes a cone basically to your brain 10,000 times more sensitive than a rod. In other words, every rod, remember, that uh, converges, it takes 10,000 rods for one nerve in the brain. But each cone has its own nerve in the brain. That is what enables your center of vision your phobia for the detail vision to be all cones. This is why when we talked yesterday about the detail vision being in the center, the phobia centralis, that is all cones. So as it goes back to your brain, every cone in your retina has a particular nerve for that. That enables you to see basically 10,000 times better than with just your rock. You're like, well, why would I have rods then? Like, why wouldn't my vision be all cones? Well, that's actually a good question. And if you've ever been outside on a very dim night, on a dark night, maybe you've done this. You've been looking up at the sky, and in the corner of your vision, you see a star. But when you look right at that star, it's gone. When you look away, it's there. When you look back, it's gone. That's because your cones aren't sensitive enough to pick up the light from that star. And when you look directly at it, of course, that light is hitting directly at your phobia, and you're blind to it. But your rods on the outside of the phobia are very sensitive and pick up that dim, very dim light. Rods are really good for, like, movement in your peripheral vision, for uh, picking up uh, very small light sources and stuff, especially at night in your peripheral vision. Now, this is a fun uh, link I wanted to show you. Um, this interactive here, if I scroll down, shows you how you can take the primary colors of light and make them into basically any color. In fact, if I take the green and the red and overlap them, I get yellow. If I take the blue and the red, I get purple. Blue and green, I get this light blue. If I start shading them together, you get all three of them here. You get the white light here in the middle where the arrow is. Um, we can, you're like, well, what about things like orange, right? Well, we can, uh, we can turn up and down the amount of red. And if we put red over green and turn up the amount of red, we get yellow. If we turn down the amount of green, we start to get orange. And if we put the blue over it, we have this fuchsia color. Right? If we turn down the amount of red, you start getting shades of blue. If you turn up and down the amount of green, if, you, if it's 100% of all, we get white. Turn down the amount of green, you start getting these mauves. Turn down the amount of blue, you start getting into the 
oranges again, the bright yellows. The, look at all the shades of color that we can get by just stimulating our cones at different rates. And so, of course, if there's no light, we have black, dark green, right? As we turn up the green a little bit, we go into these darker greens. We sort of fade it in and out. We can start making things, start making colors, these varieties of colors with all of our cones. Now, the most common color blindness, of course, is red green. So if somebody's red green color blind, they can pick up blue and that's it. And so, but is it possible for people to be just green colorblind? Sure. So these people will see the world in shades of red and blue. It is possible to be just blue, just missing blue. Sure. The most common, however, is red green colorblind. So the, the one you hear about the most often is the red green color. People are missing red and green. And so they see the world in shades of blue and that's it. All right. Clear the ink here. So uh, this doesn't really matter. You don't need to write it down, but I think this graph here shows you how it works then. That each one of these cones is sensitive in a different wavelength of light. And the longer wavelengths, the red, I think I called it shorter earlier, and it was a mistake. They have cones that are sensitive to there, and where they all overlap in here is where you see white light. If they're all getting white right now in this room, that white light is shining and hitting all of your cones and registering all of your cones equally as white light. And then, of course, what happens from there is, and here's where, okay, vision becomes very interesting, and we don't really know a lot about it, but if you look at what happens, your uh, right eye brings messages back to the left side of your brain, but not all. You do have some vision from your right eye that goes to the same side of your brain. Same thing here. Your nerves from your left eye, some of them cross over, just like happens with your spinal nerves and your touch and your feel, and some don't. And notice also that rather than just all going back here to the optic lobe, back here at the optical lobe, is in, it's called your visual cortex and the occipital lobe, it's an optic for the occipital. You also have some that come in here near the areas of memory. And if you want interesting reading, look up the concept of blind sight. That there are people that if they blindfold them and give them certain visual cues, they can still say they saw what they were looking at. Sorry, you probably can't read that color. Let me change it. So you can read. Blind sight. Look it up yourself and go down a rabbit hole on Wikipedia or somewhere else about these experiments that they've done with blinding people, blind, blindfolding people, and in and taking also people that have been blind, uh, people that are uh, went blind, and it's just it's just pretty cool. But you'll notice there's this area of overlap because your eyes are. Because you have two eyes, you triangulate, right? This purple area is the area where you see where you see this overlap, these nerves that get this fixation point. So that's what we know about vision. I'm sure you have questions. Um, you can save them for tomorrow or put them uh, if you have some right now, it'd be great if you type them into the question thing I put on Google Classroom for you. Uh, so we can talk about those uh, when I come back.